welcome to Darya Online Training Module. Module number 5 Inert Gas System on Tankers Inert Gas Inert gas is a gas or a mixture of gases such as flue gas containing insufficient oxygen to suppress combustion of flammable hydrocarbon gases. Inert gas is principally used to control cargo tank atmospheres and so prevent the formation of flammable mixtures. The primary requirement for an inert gas is low oxygen content. Main sources of inert gas on tankers are uptake gas from the ship's boilers or an independent inert gas generator. Inert gas sources Flue gas or exhaust gas This gas is exhaust gas from the steam generating boilers or occasionally from the main engine and passes through a scrubber or filter unit for cooling and cleaning out the sulfur oxides and soot blown by a blower fan towards the cargo tanks. Inert Gas Generator IgG Inert gas is generated by burning marine diesel oil in a furnace and the exhaust gas is blown by ordinary blowers via a scrubber or filter unit for cleaning out the sulfur oxide and soot towards the cargo tanks. This unit making the inert gas is often called IgG. Inert gas requirements SOLAS regulations require an inert gas system to be fitted on all new oil tankers after 1st Jan 2016 of 8000 dead weight and above and for old oil tankers more than 20,000 dead weight. IG systems be capable of delivering IG with an oxygen content of the IG main not more than 5% by volume at any required rate of flow and of maintaining a positive pressure in the cargo tanks all times with an atmosphere having an oxygen content of not more than 8% by volume. The system shall be capable of delivering inert gas to the cargo tanks at a rate of at least 125% of the maximum rate of discharge capacity of the ship expressed as a volume. At least two non-return devices shall be fitted in the inert gas supply main. Inert gas applications The primary use of inert gas is to make non-flammable atmosphere inside cargo tanks by replacing and reducing the oxygen in cargo tanks. The general use cases of inert gas are 1. Inerting of empty cargo tanks prior loading 2. Inerting of cargo tanks during discharging operation to replace the cargo discharged volume by inert gas. 3. Purging by inert gas to reduce the hydrocarbon content to 2% or less by volume. 4. Maintaining positive pressure during crude oil washing or cargo tank cleaning. 5. Prevention of static charge electricity. Inert gas composition Nitrogen is around 83%, carbon dioxide 12 to 14%, oxygen 
2 to 4 percent. Rest are traces of sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, water vapors, ash and soot etc. Inert gas generation The basic principle of generation of inert gas is the burning of fuel with continuous input of fresh air which gives output of flue gas as inert gas. The burning of fuel consumes the oxygen of fresh air supplied and makes it oxygen deficient. The oxygen percentage of inert gas is maintained by regulating the fuel-air ratio. Fuel auto-regulating valves are provided to maintain the fuel-air ratio. Generally, on crude oil tankers, in boilers, fuel oil is burnt to produce steam and the flue gas is used as inert gas. Product and chemical tankers have inert gas generator that is IgG in which diesel oil is burnt to produce cleaner inert gas. Flue gas generated is of very high temperature and contains lots of soot with sulfur dioxide enter the scrubber tower from bottom and passes through a series of water spray and baffle plates to cool, clean and moist the gases. The sulfur dioxide level decreases up to 90% and gas becomes clear of soot. Efficient scrubbing of the gas is essential, particularly for the reduction of the sulfur dioxide content. High levels of sulfur dioxide increases the acidic characteristic of the Ig, which is harmful to personnel and may cause accelerated corrosion to the structure of a ship. This is the basic flow chart of inert gas generation. The steps involved are explained in the next slides. Inert gas scrubber tower. The main purpose of scrubber tower is to clean and cool the inert gas. It is capable of handling 125% of vessel's max discharge rate. It is also capable to remove at least 90% of sulfur dioxide and effectively eliminate any solids. Gas temperature should not exceed 5 degrees Celsius above the seawater. Inert Gas Blowers After exhaust gas is treated by scrubber, it is delivered to the inert gas blower fans. The system should be capable of delivering the 125% capacity. Generally, two fans of equal capacity are fitted. Each fan must be capable of overcoming the water seal in the wet or semi-dry deck seal unit. Oxygen Analyzer Unit After blow of fans, the inert gas sample passes through oxygen analyzer unit to confirm the oxygen content of gas is less than 5% as per SOLAR's regulations. If the oxygen content is more than 5%, the inert gas is released to atmosphere controlled by auto-regulating valves. When oxygen content is less than 5%, then the inert gas is ready for delivery on deck controlled by CCR command and auto-regulating valves. Prior every operation, the oxygen sensors to be calibrated by test gas.
inert gas panel. When IG is ready for delivery on deck, indication will appear on IG control panel. When pressing delivery button, the auto-regulating valves will operate. The deck delivery valve will open and slowly atmospheric valve will close down. To avoid over-pressurization in system, the inert gas pressure limit are set within desired range. The auto-regulating valves for deck delivery and atmosphere release operates according to the maintained demand and supply ratio. Panel is provided with oxygen and pressure readings with printer. Deck seal Purpose of the deck seal is to stop the gases to return back which are coming from the blower to cargo tanks. It acts as a non-return arrangement which allows only IG to go to cargo tanks and prevents backflow of any gas from cargo tanks to IG plant. A demister is fitted to absorb the moisture carried away by the gases. These are the diagrams of deck seal operation. The first one shows when the IG flows towards cargo tanks. The second one shows the gas backflow from cargo tanks. It consists of a chamber semi filled with water and two pipes for inlet and outlet of flue gases, while another two small pipes denote inlet and outlet for sealing water. There is a demister pad to remove water droplets from gas. When IG flows toward cargo tank, the IG from inner pipe displaces the water in deck, inner chamber and IG flows to cargo tanks through demister pads. When IG plant is stopped, the water rises in inner pipe to level corresponding to back pressure from cargo tanks. As the height of inner pipe is more, it creates a water pressure head and seals the IG inlet line. PV Breaker Pressure Vacuum or PV Breaker The PV Breaker helps in controlling the over or under pressurization of cargo tanks. The PV breaker vent is fitted with flame trap to avoid fire to ignite when loading or discharging operation is going on when in port. PV breaker to be considered as safety device not the means of venting. This is the basic diagram of PV breaker operation. When IG pressure in cargo tanks and IG line is zero or high or in vacuum. PV breaker works on the principle of set water column filled in it. It allows the pressure to release from common IG line by emptying out the filled water in PV breaker. It also allows to break the vacuum by allowing the air inside the tanks through common IG line. When pressure rises. When the pressure in the cargo oil tanks rise, the seal liquid rises in the inner pipe. At this time, if the pressure beyond the specific capacity of the breaker, the seal liquid will push out of the pipe to let the pressure inside to be out. When pressure drops. When the pressure in the cargo oil tanks fall, the seal liquid rises in the outer pipe. If the pressure beyond the specific capacity of the breaker, the seal liquid is drawn into the cargo oil tanks and atmospheric air will be inhaled in the tank. PV Valve 
pressure vacuum PV valve is designed to release and or let in pressure to protect the cargo tank from exploding or imploding due to too high or too low pressure in the tank. They are also called high velocity pressure vacuum valve as they release the hydrocarbon vapor at high velocity so that dilution of the hydrocarbon vapor in the atmosphere is clear of the tanker's deck. Vents are sited in location designed to prevent the accumulation of an explosive vapor on the tank deck or around accommodation or engine room housings. A pressure vacuum valve is the primary mechanism of venting for the protection of cargo tank from over and under pressure. PV valves to be tried out manually prior every operation. Pressure side weight plate lifts up if the pressure inside tank exceeds set pressure and vacuum side weight plate lifts up if the vacuum drops below set value. It acts as automatic venting of cargo tanks. Mast riser. The mast riser is a vertical pipe fitted to the common venting pipelines of all the cargo tanks. It acts as a primary means of venting on crude oil tanker which carry homogeneous cargo. Mast riser is a vent rise to height so that dilution of the hydrocarbon vapors in the atmosphere takes place clear of the tanker's deck. Mast riser are provided with manual valve to control the venting rate. On top of mast rise, flame arrester screen or mesh is provided as fire safety. The inert gas is supplied to cargo tanks through branch IG lines from main IG line. The branch IG connects each cargo tanks with main branch IG system. So with mass riser and PV breaker also. The branch IG walls becomes very critical as if it is accidentally closed then the cargo tanks will be isolated from inert gas venting system. From homogeneous cargo, branch IG valve is always kept in open and locked condition and keys are to be kept with chief officer. So the basic inert gas components are exhaust gases source that are boilers or IgG then the flue gas valve or boiler uptakes valve then comes the scrubber tower then gas blower after that oxygen analyzer then comes the ig pressure regulating valve then deck seal and after that non-return valves then comes the deck isolating valve then the pv breaker thereafter the pv valve and mast riser Primary means of venting. As per SOLAS, the venting arrangements shall be so designed and operated as to ensure that neither pressure nor vacuum in the cargo tanks shall exceed design parameters. So, during loading and unloading, the tanks are maintained at optimum pressure level. Normally, mast riser if provided or PV walls act as the primary means of venting. These are the first method which is used for venting so they called as primary means of venting. Secondary means of venting. As per SOLAS, a secondary means of allowing full flow relief of vapors, air, or inert gas mixtures shall be provided to prevent overpressure or under pressure in the event of failure of primary means of venting. 
the most common secondary means of venting fitted on modern tankers is the pressure sensors so during loading and unloading the primary means of venting could not cope up with venting requirements then the secondary means will alert the duty officer to act accordingly as per solas alternatively the pressure sensors may be fitted in each tank protected by primary means of venting with a monitoring system in the ship's cargo control room or the position from which cargo operations are normally carried out such monitoring equipment shall also provide an alarm facility which is activated by detection of overpressure or under pressure condition within a tank pressure alarms ocimf recommends this variation to be maximum 10% over the pv valve set pressures generally pressure alarms are provided as secondary means of venting on tankers so it is very important that the alarms are set at correct values please see below for the example of pressure alarms under three condition that are inverted condition non inverted condition and vapor return line connected conditions alarms if the tank pressure alarm sounds for a tank duty officer need to reduce the loading or unloading rate in this tank and investigate the reason for over pressure in the tank if any of ig panel alarm sounds the duty officer needs to investigate and inform the in charge as soon as possible all ig alarms to be tested prior every discharging operations all ig alarms to be investigated prior putting silent and reset if inert gas system is stopped or not working then discharging has to be stopped and master to be informed ig system to be functionally tried out prior entering discharge port thank you for attending this training module